Hey guys, Stan here. This is the last video of the Direct Drive comparison series. I'll try to keep this video rather short. It's a short summary of each review and my recommendation what to get in which situation. If you're interested in a more detailed review for each base, I would recommend to check the specific videos in this playlist that I will link here. Before we go into detail, there were some comments in the Fanatec DD2 review about disabling the linear mode to get a stronger force feedback. First of all, I find it a little weird to name something linear mode when you want people to disable it, because I personally think a direct drive is all about linearity of the force feedback, but whatever. It's just, it's just words and I should have read what the linear mode actually does. I redid my tests and the force feedback definitely is a little bit stronger with the linear mode disabled. Also the little display on the wheel showed peaks in the 23-24 newton meter range, so yeah. I still think that the Fanatec DD2 is a little bit weaker than both the VRS and the Simicube 2, but again, it's not a scientific measurement, just my feeling from testing all the three bases here. Also, it's probably not really an issue because I guess like 98.734% of the users will never use these high forces anyways. I also played around with the QR a little more with tightening that gold nut a little bit before putting on the wheel, but Honestly, that didn't make any difference for me at all. There was always some play in the system, but yeah. Honestly, this is something that you notice when you really sit in front of the wheel and check for the flex and do these crazy movements on the wheel. You don't really notice it when you're actually driving, so not that big of a deal. So since we're already talking about the fan attack, let's just continue with this one. Short summary of my review. Great force feedback that is customizable a lot with all the settings in the FanaLab software. The force feedback itself reminded me a lot how the force feedback feels on the Simicube 2 Pro. In terms of subjective feel, again, I didn't do any scientific torque measurements or anything. It is still like the weakest of the three bases, even with the linear mode disabled. But honestly, it's pretty much negligible because all three bases have plenty of power that most people will just never use. There are a few things I do not like. I talked about it in my review. The quick release is rather bad in my opinion. My, maybe my sample of the base just has a really bad one but I have quite a lot of play and it's also just not really that quick to release with that gold nut and everything. Yeah, not that great. But I guess Fanatec kind of agrees with that and that's why they are developing the QR2 at the moment. And I will definitely like get this when it's released and give you a proper feedback on that. Something that also was noticeable in the direct comparison is that the motor they use is just not as smooth as the motors used in the VRS and the Simicube. This is something you notice immediately when you're going from the Simicube 2, for example, to the DD2. When you turn the wheel, you notice these small steps of different resistance. It's actually more apparent with, with no or with lower forces. When you crank up the force feedback, it definitely becomes less noticeable. I have to say though, after a few minutes of driving, you don't really notice these steps like any longer, at least not to agree where it might be distracting or something. Something I really like is the mounting points of the base on the sides. I didn't use the mounting brackets from Fanatec because I think they are a little bit pricey, but Simlab has a very nice side mount for the Fanatec that works really well. It's super easy to adjust, it's very sturdy. I actually prefer it over the front mount for the uh, VRS and the uh, Simicube. And something that also is really nice is the communication to the wheels that is handled within the connector in the quick release. You don't have any cables hanging around. I mean, the cables never really annoyed me, but when I started using my wireless cube controls wheel, uh, I definitely appreciate the absence of a cable. Of course, the communication within the QR only works with Fanatec wheels, which leads us to the next point, the ecosystem. With Fanatec, you have a decent amount of steering wheels that you can choose from. They are quite affordable, but also you don't really have any high-end options that compare to something like Usher Racing, GSI, Precision Sim Engineering, for example. If you look at the formula wheel from Fanatec next to an Usher Racing F64, it definitely feels a little more toyish, but uh, then again it's 370 euros and the Usher is 1000 euros, so it's not really a fair comparison. I think in terms of what you get for your money, the Fanatec steering wheels are pretty much unbeatable to be honest. I just wish there were some real premium options, but that might change in the future with the upcoming BMW wheel for example. Something I find really disappointing is that Fanatec basically charges 100 euros for nothing when you want to use a third party wheel. For example, you want to use a GSI wheel on the Fanatec base, you need to buy a Fanatec podium hub which costs 200 euros and that basically is the QR which costs 100 euros plus some electronics that you don't need. I mean, yes, theoretically you could connect shifters and buttons to the podium hub, but you don't need that when you just want to use a third party wheel. So basically you pay a 100 euro fee for nothing. 
Sim racing machines has something similar to the podium hub for cheaper, but it's actually often sold out, so that doesn't really help. You need this podium hub for each custom wheel you want to use, or you can actually put a quick release onto the podium hub and then use that, which might be a better and cheaper solution in the end. But it will definitely introduce more flex because longer shaft means longer level means more play. I totally understand why Fanatec is doing this. I mean, they want to keep you in their ecosystem, but yeah, I don't like it. Fanatec DD2 is also the only base that required me to ground my rig because otherwise several USB devices would just freak out. But honestly, this also could just be bad luck because EMI and grounding, it can be a pain. I know people who had to ground their rig with simul cubes, with VRS bases. It's just sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. You don't really know why. Um, yeah, it's, it's a pain. <laughs> my verdict on the DD2 would be if you like the wheels that Fanatec provides, it's a great base. If you maybe already have a lot of Fanatec wheels, it makes sense to get one of these. If you want to use other wheels, I probably would not recommend the direct drives from Fanatec because in my opinion, you can get better bases for less money. If you want to play on consoles, Fanatec is the only direct drive that works on consoles. Also, the DD1 might be the better buy in terms of price performance. I didn't test it, but it has a little less power, but I think most people don't need that much power. All right, next base, Simulcube 2. Again, check the longer reviews. I actually have two reviews on my channel. I'll link them here in the corner. Uh, the base is around the same price as the DD2 at roughly 1,500 euros. It's a very mature system that evolved out of the Simulcube 1. It has plenty of customization in the software with a lot of customizable filters. Force feedback feels very good, but to be honest, it feels very similar to the DD2 regarding force feedback. Something I really like on the Simulcube 2 is the force reduction filter, as that one lets you run higher force feedback settings without exhausting your arms in longer corners. Custom servo motor they developed is very smooth, it feels good. To be honest, I don't really know what to say about it, and I think that is a good thing because it just works well, it feels good, nothing to complain about, it's, it's a solid unit. Revision 1 of the Simulcube 2 had a power supply design with two power supplies that led to some issues in my situation because it tripped the circuit breaker when I turned on the master switch for both power supplies. But I upgraded to Revision 2 to Revision 5. Upgraded to Revision 2, which now has a single PSU design and I don't have that issue anymore. The quick release is a clever and simple design, which works very well, has zero flex. Again, thanks to the comments in the review, somebody recommended to put some oil on the QR to avoid that the wheels are getting stuck on it. And I put a little bit of Teflon grease on the quick release and since then the wheels just super easy to remove, uh, no issues anymore. So thank you for that. Simulcube support is very good. I had some issues with the USB connection of my Simulcube 2 and the warranty repair was very quick. Communication has been good. My revision 1 was upgraded to revision 2 in the repair process, so that's nice. I wish I didn't have to use the support, but oh well. The Simcube 2 also supports wireless wheels with a proprietary protocol. I don't really know whether I should think this is a good or a bad thing. I mean, of course, wireless wheels are super convenient, but again, we have a closed ecosystem here. Same issue as with Fanatec. But in this case, there's also like no possibility at all to use a Simulcube wireless wheel with any other system. I really wish Simulcube would release a simple USB adapter that lets you use the Simulcube wireless wheels with any other base. Would be great because the Simulcube wireless module for the wheel is, is really awesome. I have this Cube Control, GT Pro, Sparco, whatever wheel here that uses it and the electronics, the encoders, everything works very well. Flawless. Wireless is always more reliable than a cable in my opinion, but yeah. If I want to use another base now, I'm just out of luck or I'll just have to put my Simulcube 2 somewhere here in the room and uh, use that to connect to the wheel. Of course, I knew that when I bought the wheel, but still I wish there was some sort of accessory available to use the wireless wheels with any system. Maybe maybe I should just develop my own wireless module that retrofits the Simulcube 1 and works with any wheel. I'm actually an electrical engineer in my main job, if you didn't know that. You know what? I think I tried to convert my GSI GXL to a wireless wheel using Bluetooth. Let's see how that goes. Anyways, let's talk about the last base, the VRS Direct Force Pro. This is the only base that I don't own. It was a loaned unit from Shane. Shane, thanks again for providing the unit. Um, when I think of this base, less is more immediately comes into my mind. What VRS did here is they took the well-known small midge motor and built their own electronics and software for it. Result is excellent. The VRS is the cheapest base out of the three. And I think the only point where you can actually notice that is software features at the moment. You basically get an interpolation filter and a damping filter, that's it. But from what I read on the VRS Discord, there are some nice updates coming soon. VRS unit is also the only one with an external control box, which also includes the power supply. 
But this box is actually smaller than the power supplies of the Simicube 2 and the Fanatec, so not really that big of a deal. Only downside is that you have to route two rather thick cables to it, but oh well, such is life. Force feedback feels the rawest and most direct to me, I like that quite a lot. I think with the VRS you can feel the most details of the car and the road. If you like a more damped force feedback, this might not be for you, but then again, why get a direct drive if you like a damped force feedback, so yeah. I think a good example of the force feedback is the ABS in iRacing. I can feel the ABS the best on the VRS and I was not able to dial in a similar feel on the other bases. I still think the whole VRS config software feels a little bit half-baked with sliders that are available in the software and you can change them but they don't actually do anything but yeah. But again it's the newest one from the direct drives and they confirmed on the discord that there are more features and filters coming. Something that I also read on the Discord is there will be wireless wheels by VRS coming soon and since the DirectForce Pro does not have any wireless receiver, it will probably just be like regular Bluetooth or something else that you can use with any base. That's pretty cool. Alright, uh, that was a short summary of my reviews, so which one would I actually recommend? If you like the Fanatec wheels and maybe you already have a lot of them and you are fine with paying 200 euros for a podium hub if you ever want to use a third party wheel, there's nothing wrong with just buying a DD2 and be happy with it. In my opinion, like having all the three bases here and doing extensive tests, it now sounds a little bit harsh, but I think it's the worst of the bunch, but it's it's complaining on a very high level. I mean, all three bases are great and will give you great feedback and you will probably have a lot of fun when you're driving with them. Objectively, looking at all the facts and how mature the system is, I probably would have to recommend the Simicube 2 Pro. I've been using this base since release and apart from the USB disconnect issue and the two power supply design, I've been very happy with it. If you don't need the 25 Newton meters, I guess most people actually won't. The Simicube 2 Sport might be a very good cheaper option as well at around 1,300 euros. You get a huge amount of customization, wireless wheel support, a mature system and a very nice and high quality base with a great quick release that comes in the box. Subjectively, I have to say my favorite base is actually the VRS DirectForce Pro though. This base just gives me a feeling for the car and the road that I was not able to reproduce with the other two. I'm definitely not saying that the other two are bad or anything, they are awesome, but the VRS just has this rawness in the first feedback that I really really like a lot. It's actually a little bit unfortunate for me because the VRS is actually the one of the three that I don't own so yeah I will probably have to get my own. It's the cheapest of the three but not by as much as you would think. The base price is 900 euros but you have to add 50 euros for the shaft clamp and around 150 to 200 euros for a quick release system. New Simlab Zero Play for 170 euros looks promising. So uh, the total price is more like around 1,100 euros. But yeah, that's it for the comparison video. My favorite base is the VRS one. To be honest, I didn't expect that result myself since I definitely prefer the Simicube 2 over the Simicube 1 and the VRS uses the same motor. So yeah, oh well, at least it's the cheapest one. Let me know in the comments down below if you ever had the chance to compare wheelbases and what your impression was. I'm definitely curious about that. If you liked the video, click that thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to the channel and turn on the notifications. I definitely will do more reviews in the future as I'm really having fun with these and you guys also seem to like them, at least I hope so. But anyways, thanks a lot for watching. I hope to see you on track and in the next video. Have a great day. Goodbye.